All right, I guess I'm back live. Let's try this again. Freaking, for some reason my Wi Fi is flipping out. I need to figure out something to do about that. Get myself some wired connection here. All right. Hopefully I have another another roll of solder around here. Which I'm sure I do. I bought a couple of them last time. So we'll get the headers set in right here. Get some solder on that solder iron. And these should run pretty quick. Just tacking down 40 solder points. Let's see if I can actually get this in camera frame here. And we'll just plow right through these. I've got five of these boards to build, so I've got an awful lot of these to work on. See anybody watching? Nope, nobody's on stream yet. But that's okay. For the replay, my name is Duo. I do 3D printing, electronics projects, retro gaming projects, and all sorts of little random crap. Right here on my wonderful stream. Live on Twitch. Uploaded later to YouTube for repeat viewing. All right, and today I am building Raspberry Pi based 1541 Commodore floppy drive emulators. These boards will actually sit on top of Raspberry Pi 3 and provide an interface, an actual serial interface directly to a functioning Commodore. And the Raspberry Pi 3 completely emulates from the ground up all of the BIOS, CPU, everything that's functioning inside the 1541 uh, normal floppy drives and actually now they've updated it uh, the uh, emulator also now supports the 1581 drive which was a, a larger drive um, they used 
actual uh, it used actual three and a half inch floppies instead of the five and a quarter floppies. So we get all these connectors mounted. Corners tacked down on that connector. So it'll stay in place while I solder the rest of them. And just to make things a little easier, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw some flux in there, a little flux pen. And this helps the solder flow a little bit easier. It makes this go just a little bit faster. First row done. All right. Hey, I've got one viewer who's in the chat. Furdu Slow Cool. Say hi, everybody. Uh, tonight's wonderful electronics project is a Raspberry Pi hat for emulating a floppy drive or an old Commodore 64. And, uh, I just had these boards made in China. They came in pretty quick and a bunch of components including like switches and the uh, six pin DIN connectors that the Commodore uses for its serial ports that go to all the printer and floppy drive and those kind of peripherals for the Commodore. And gosh, level shifters, all sorts of little bits that go on these boards. Um, I've got five of the boards and parts enough to make five. And I'll probably give a couple away to friends that have Commodores. I'll definitely keep one to myself though. I do have a prototype that was hand built that uh, is right here, actual hand built version, hand wired. And it's nice, it works. It's just not the uh, it's not the prettiest thing. And these boards are actually much nicer and they're a, a pretty regular format that uh, somebody actually has designed a 3D printed case for. And uh, I'm all about 3D printing cases. That's why I got into 3D printing in the first place. It's electronics projects. So got the 40 pin connector on that one done and I'm just going through right now and popping in the 40 pin connectors. I've got quite a few to go, quite a few pins to go at least. And I'll throw on a little bit of uh, a little bit of resin flux on there just to get those pins nice and amenable to solder.
tech down the first corner, tech down the opposite corner. And now that connector will sit in there upside down. So all the primary components are on the top of the board. The header that connects to Raspberry Pi is underneath. We'll go ahead and get this third board done. Having this kind of helping hands board holder is definitely a, a lifesaver. I don't have to hunch too far over the damn thing. And there are cases where I definitely need three hands. One of my other streams the other night was just like that. Could have used three hands. Actually, I could have used some blue tech putty, but I didn't have any on, on me at the time. So when you're soldering things in like IC sockets, you know, you got to flip the board over after you put the socket in the board. And of course, you got to either hold it or flip it over so that the desk holds it. But if you have a little bit of blue tack pudding, just drop that on there. It will actually sit on top of the socket and hold it in. It's a nice, quick, cheap idea. Hey, I got another viewer in chat. Who's watching? Who's hanging out? Say hi. Introduce yourselves. Anybody that's uh, joining that doesn't know, my name is Duo. I do 3D printing and electronics projects. And currently I'm building some daughter boards for Raspberry Pis. And daughter boards. This Raspberry Pi, they're called hats. Clean off that soldering iron there, and I lost another viewer. Oh well. All right. So that board's got the connector in. That's three out of five. That's not bad. Looks like I had a bot drop by. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Say hi, bots. We'll go ahead and get the pie header for this fourth board. Pins on the opposite side, tack down, clean off the soldering iron, and go to town. So let's see, um, for these boards, I picked them up in China for anybody who's listening and hadn't seen them before. Um, PC board manufacturing house called PCB Away. They, uh, boy, do they, uh, they crank out PC boards very cheaply, very quickly, uh, as long as they're small boards. Once you start getting into larger boards, they start getting substantially more expensive. And the whole business model behind these PC board manufacturing houses is that they can take orders from 
you know, 20 or 30 people and put them into, you know, panelize them all into one single production run on one board. And they can have these boards produced quickly, very quickly. And 40. All right, so there's connector. There's header connector number four. Oof, it's getting a little smoky in here. Where is my airflow? I am back. I'm going to fix the airflow, get the fan going. So, now for the fifth board. I'll go ahead and get some flux on this one. Solder down. Right. Let's see. It's a Monday night. I guess everybody's asleep tonight. That's not really surprising. All right. Everybody, here we go. Let's probably swap that around so you guys can actually follow along. Not that my close up camera is very good. I've got some airflow in here. It's a little bit cooler, actually. Um, surprisingly enough, that actually is affecting the, the soldering iron just a bit. The solder is now taking just a hair longer to, to actually melt I've almost got this second row on the last board done here and this is the majority of the solder points just because there's Forward in each of these connectors. Thirty-nine, forty. 
All right. So yeah, now I've actually got all of the 40 pin headers soldered on for all of those. And what did I do with my PCB speakers? I don't know, I'll get to those in a bit. So we can go ahead and continue with this exact same board. And what we're going to do is, let's see. Yeah, maybe I'll start with switches. These are right angle switches. They fit right off on the side of the board here and face outward which is great for um, the 3D printed cases for this. You can actually have buttons sticking out of the side of the case. And these are the right angle switches. They're just single momentary on off switches. Just plug straight into the boards, like so. And thankfully, the tabs on these are actually bent in such a way as that they hold themselves in to the PCB. So you can actually just flip the board around and solder it without them falling out, which is kind of nice. And they've got little, they've got nice long actual button heads on them. Ooh, so I just finished off that solder. Dig out my other roll here in a minute. Still nobody chatting it up, but that's okay. We will get there. If anybody stops in and wants to say hi, just say hi in chat. Take over chat if you want. Say something. Switches are actually pushed in, and we'll get back to tacking these down. This part's not terribly difficult. Just heat and move, heat and move. And then I am just about out of solder on this roll. That is surprising. Actually, got some nice buttons. So that's good. Pop that one out. Now we're going to 
serial connectors. That was pretty, pretty easy on here. slightly out of camera frame with me. And just soldered in the serial connector there. And in fact I have just enough solder to get the second one in. Let's see if this angle works a little bit nicer. These serial connectors actually came loose in a bag. Is that not really? So all the tabs are bent. Well, it's not so bad, I guess. The bent tabs will actually help hold that in while I start soldering it. And the last one. So both the serial ports are now in. Essentially, the uh, the C64 serial ports are daisy chain serial ports. They they're all just pass through, sitting on the line. So you can plug plug your floppy drive into your port. Floppy drive in here. You can send out the signal. I actually connect a. Uh, sorry. You can connect the, the Commodore 64 here, thinking it's a floppy drive, and then you can actually connect your printer, like a serial printer, out to the other one. All right, so. Now what else do we have? Shifters. There's actually some three, three to five volt level shifters in here because the the Raspberry Pi only deals in 3.3 volt, and of course all the Commodore stuff is older tech that's five volt. And those two don't play together too well without some kind of device running interference. And uh, let's see. I'll actually just slide these in and use them as a template. The, the modules that I have for the level shifters, they're 
just these modules right here. They're completely like ready to go. All you gotta do is solder the headers on there and solder it into the board. So it looks like those don't fit. Actually, they're, they're slightly wider. It's about two millimeters wider on the, the headers than what's on the board. And of course, when you order stuff from China, you never know exactly what you're going to end up with. But the pins do bend inward, which is just fine. I've still only got one viewer. That's a little disappointing. I was hoping somebody would be hang out, hanging out and chatting tonight. So let's see. Should be on creative, pretty pretty electronics. And I got this tiny little stub of solder left. So I'm gonna just go find some more of that. Um, I know I have one around here somewhere, it's probably on my desk. inward. Oh, interesting. So it looks like the level shifters that I got are actually quite different. The pinout is completely different. It's unfortunate. So I'll have to buy some other ones. And that's just funny. But that doesn't mean we can't actually continue with the rest of the parts on the board. It's a socket for a 7406 uh, inverter chip. I believe it's an inverter. It's a quad inverter. Or was it a hex inverter? Um, but it's used as a bus driver. Um, and if you don't use like a, a nice bus driver, you can actually uh, you can actually have some current issues feeding back into your Raspberry Pi. If you have a bunch of if you have a bunch of devices that are actually attached to the serial bus at the same time, and I have zero viewers, even better. Hey, Eddie. Welcome to the new place. Um, same apartment, just uh, rearranged. Actually, I've uh, set up my own uh, my own actual workspace streaming space. I've got a Mendel Max three printer in its container back here. In fact, actually, let me switch over here real quick so you can see a little bit better. It's my Mendel Max three back there, um, which is going to be printing out some parts for uh, a board game here shortly. This is my gigantic. Hey. 
Thanks for following. Uh, this black frame here is my giant uh, hypercube evolution. Um, and that's a 300 by 300 by 550 on the vertical. Um, that's in progress. I've got the duet board actually here. Um, I'm working on testing and getting all the wiring done. Um, this is my workspace. Got some crap up on the shelf, some blinky LEDs, because who doesn't love blinky LEDs? Um, and the project I'm working on right now actually is a actual PC boards that I ordered from China. Um, here's actually a, a hand-built version of it. Um, it is a 1541 Commodore floppy drive emulator uh, interface board. It actually fits on top of a Raspberry Pi 3. Jake, you are copying me other than my Hebo is in 550. How tall is your Hebo? Uh, trying to yeah, I am. Uh, I, I do actually. I have my Commodores actually set aside for now. I did some repair on it uh, on a stream earlier, um, a couple weeks back. And uh, what this does, it, it essentially I can take disk images that are literally on on my computer, drop them on an SD card on the Raspberry Pi, and let's see if I can actually get this one going. The actual emulation app uh, completely controls the Pi. Um, there's no Linux OS boot. It is just a single application. And so it boots up really darn quick and completely perfectly emulates a, uh, all the, the computer hardware that's in a Commodore floppy drive. I don't even have the SD card in here, do I? Nope, I took the SD card out. So nothing's actually going to pop up on the screen. But uh, there's some buttons here that actually control which uh, floppy drive image it's on. You can actually switch floppy drive images on the fly. There's a little uh, red LED that actually emulates the uh, emulates the LED on front of the floppy drive on the actual drive and a little piezo speaker that actually makes noise like a floppy drive, which is kind of funny. Um, and this little hand-built prototype is, I mean, it works. It's just not super pretty. And I bought some PC boards from PCBWay and I bought some components from eBay China. And now that I've got the components together, I'm or now I got the components, components in. Hey, Panzer, how you doing? Good to see you. Now that I got the components in, I'm actually assembling them. Um, and here's one of the initial boards. Essentially, there's the Raspberry Pi interface connector on the back, and then there are two serial port connectors for the Commodore itself. On top, there's the glue logic. There's actually going to be a, an, another OLED screen on the top and buttons on the front to control the actual uh, the disk image that's loaded and all the, all the little fancy crap that comes with it. Uh, and there's actually a 3D printed case that fits this that actually looks like a Commodore floppy drive that holds the, the Raspberry Pi on the board. It looks really cool. So uh, I'm putting a few of these together. I got boards. I got enough boards for five of them. Um, PCB Way doesn't do small batches. You have to order at least like five boards. But all five boards were twelve bucks. Not a big deal. So oh, you got one of the Ziltec kits, the three hundred by three hundred by four hundred. Yeah, they uh, Ziltec is definitely like they had some original Hypercube kits, and those sold sold well enough that, you know, they decided, hey, since everybody's doing the Hypercube Evo now, we might as well sell those as well. Um, in fact, on uh, on my Z-axis here, I have ball screws, which are from Ziltec. And uh, these are their fantastic ball screws. I mean, I was talking to Chris about it. I was the one who first learned they were doing the Evo. That's cool. That that is pretty cool. And it, it popped up because I'm part of the Evo group on Facebook. And uh, 
think somebody was mentioning that something was going to happen really, really soon. They were going to say something, some big announcement, and then it came out that, hey, Ziltek's carrying the Evo kits. So, like, that's pretty darn cool. All right. And uh, unfortunately, I did just realize just before you guys came in uh, where a bomb of stuff to print is. Yes. Um, the stuff to print is on the Thingiverse Hypercube Evo official object, uh, official. Let me see if I can actually grab a link to that here real quick. I think I've got it up even. Um, I'll throw this in chat. That's the actual official Hevo original. Um, and honestly, the original the original parts on that are just fine. I have a couple of modifications because I did some stuff like uh, the ball screws. The ball screws were not originally part of the design. They they used regular lead screws, and I had to like custom make my own adapters to hold uh, the mounts for the ball screw and. There's actually one on top I haven't installed yet. Uh, kind of hard to see. <laughs> um, there are... I, I love the ball screws. I really do love the ball screws. They are so smooth. There's no backlash in them. They are a little expensive. But they're smooth. They have no backlash. And they have a very low pitch. So the actual resolution, the Z resolution is really tight. Next time you're up, oh yeah, like totally. When, whenever you come up, let me know. Um, in fact, I just, my uh, my entire Microsoft team just got fired, so um, I'll have plenty of time if you come up soon. <laughs> uh, Microsoft actually just fired like 90, literally nine zero support teams around the world um, for some new money saving initiative which is hilarious because they just had their most profitable quarter ever and uh literally they no actually they're not moving into austin um our group we had three teams we had north carolina we had texas and we had kirkland here and all three of those teams for exchange online got canned and they brought up a new team in Mexico. Um, and there's another one, I think, in Costa Rica. Um, they they actually had us train. Oh, and there's a new one in Florida that's made up of tier one tier one support engineers trying to do tier three tickets. Um, so they actually had us train the Florida and Mexico people over like the past six months, which has been ridiculous. There may be other support teams that they are moving, um, but as far as the Exchange Online, uh, the Office 365 stuff, they they just killed so many of us. Like, it, it's funny too because literally a month ago they renewed our contract for another year, um, but of course there's a clause in it that they don't actually have to do a full year; they can just quit whenever they want and literally a month and a half after that you know they just decided oh we're gonna we're gonna can everybody and we had just brought on three new people who haven't even finished their training they've never even taken a, a support call or support ticket and they're you know they're looking for new jobs already uh, the company that's that we work through as a managed services doesn't have any other positions for us because they literally just lost a huge a huge portion of their support contracts um, and they're trying to help us get on with some of the other teams that are around um, at least they gave us two weeks notice so I get to finish out I finished out last week I get to finish out this week um, I've been telling customers and clients that uh, you can't drag these dumb cases out anymore with stupid questions you know we have to end the case <laughs> And boy, do they have stupid questions. Uh, so yeah, it does suck, but you know, we're actually uh, 
we've all been using our time since we're not actually taking on new support cases. We've been using a lot of our time at the office to do job hunting, um, which they're totally okay with because obviously, you know, we got to do something. Um, one guy moved here from the East Coast um, and he's only been here a couple of months and like he spent 10 grand to move to the West Coast and now he doesn't have a job and he's kind of freaking out because you know, he, he's literally spent 10 grand, now he doesn't have that 10 grand, and he doesn't have a job. Uh, yeah, it is wrong, and it happens. And uh, the funny thing is, the guy that actually told him about the job is another guy on our team. And when he heard the announcement, uh, first thing, he was like, hey, I'm out. Um, I'm actually going to go back on the East Coast. I'm going to go up to Maine. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that, that's awesome. See ya. Um, so yeah, short tour. I kind of put together this, uh, this setup here, um, really, because I want. I, I'm going to be working on these projects anyways. So I decided I'd start streaming everything that I was going to be working on. Uh, the other night, no, the board holder's not printed. It's actually just some little cheap. I think it came. Oh, I think this was like a little five dollar special. And it's, it's just a super generic piece of plastic with a couple of metal bars. Chinese special. Uh, the other night, actually, um, on stream, I put together this project here. Um, this is a TMS 9918 video card for an 8-bit computer. Um, it's the actual video processor. Uh, I think that's... Uh, 32k of RAM, some interface chips, and uh, it's got this connector that um, slides into an 8-bit homebrew 8-bit computer board. And that computer board actually is right here. This monster. Yep, only have five weeks left at my current place as well. So what are you going to be doing after that, Panzer? Here's the actual bottom side of that board. Um, it's a fully hand-wired 40-pin backplane. And I built, I've actually built all of the cards into this, but the, the three larger cards are actually completely hand-wired. Um, this is... Actually, this is a CPU card on the back. It's fully hand-wired. Actually, it full-on works. Um, the MCP card actually is a Raspberry Pi interface <clears throat> with a, a serial port interface, so the Raspberry Pi, Pi can act as a terminal um, and a standard serial card. There's things on here like a 512K RAM ROM board that was a kit um, that I bought and a couple of other items. There's actually a... a compact flash interface buried in the center there. Um, soldering up the compact flash was a massive pain in the ass. Um, this is actually going to run, um, it's going to run a version of CPM, which is a, an older precursor to DOS. And uh, essentially the, the hardware on that machine is very close to like an MSX 8-bit computer. Um, like it's a Japanese early 80s computer, um, just a, a Z80 computer with uh, some RAM, some ROM. Um, it's got, uh, I've actually got a, a flasher. I've got an EEPROM flasher that I've got uh, CPM, a Microsoft Basic, and a couple of other things on it that are going to go into ROM. Um, and I've got so many other add-on boards to build for this thing too. It's, it's actually kind of funny. Um, I just built a seven slot board myself. There's actually a guy that makes a 12 slot board um, as a kit and that kit, uh, I think the board is like maybe 70 or 80 bucks, but it's a nicer board. Um, and of course it's actually a full-on printed PCB, whereas these I actually hand wire all of these wires. Um, that took a few days. Hands are waiting to hear back from that one position, but I'm looking at local work and 
But thankfully, it looks like there are more opportunities locally than there were last time. Over. That's that's good. Speaking of which, I'm waiting for a call back at three in 12 minutes. Ah, well, it's good to see you, Panzer. Uh, good luck on that. Uh, hope you come back sometime later. I might be around. So yeah, I, I have these little electronics projects that I've been doing. Um, 3D printing, um, a buddy of mine actually is heavily into board games. It's actually a guy I work with. Uh, <laughs> um, we do have board game night tomorrow night and I've actually been printing out game pieces, which are what are these 3D printed Star Trek uh, Ascendancy, I believe the game is. And uh, you put all these pieces together, actually, they stack up and uh, they create uh, different faction star bases. Like uh, this one here is for, uh, is like the top part of the Federation base. Uh, it's the top part of a Romulan base like the intermediate pieces and then they all glue down onto these bases. Oh, you've been printing terrain. Yeah, that's, I think Panzer was printing terrain too. So you're gonna work on your rep. Ah, you got the rep box. <laughs> that's cool. Um, I, I would like to get one of those eventually. Um, but I really need to get, I need to get the Hevo built. Um, and I've got the, the Duet Wi-Fi board on it. And actually just the other night, got all the motors wired up. Um, I've got really fantastic high-end steppers, extremely strong while being extremely thin, uh, from a company called Lynn Engineering in California. And uh, they are, they're quiet, they're strong, and with the duet, they, they just run phenomenally. Exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I, oh man. I'm actually, that, that's one of the things I'm trying to figure out because the, the Duet Wi-Fi with the RepRap firmware is something that I, I haven't had a lot of chance to play with. So I'm still digging into the documentation on that. Um, I just actually found out yesterday that there is a special uh, G-code M command to specify that the second extruder is actually a second Z driver. Ah, Artemis uses it. Yeah, okay, so yeah, uh, uh, Artemis would be nice. Um, of course, now I don't have a lot of money to spend. <laughs> um, but I've been working on the, the Hevo build for uh, uh, probably since February. I started buying parts a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, started printing things out, and these are all like Literally all the, the hardware on here is Misumi. The rails, the rods, um, Ziltec is the, for the, the ball screws. And then all the plastic hardware that's on it is white Pet G. It's actually Hatchbox Pet G that you can see the, the box up top there. Um, they're 20, 25 bucks a roll on Amazon. And did you use my code so you get a discount for for which thing? Oh, you know, I might have. Um, I do remember that code actually. And I did buy those ball screws probably three or four months ago. They weren't super expensive. Um, Honestly, the, the biggest problem I have with the ball screws is the fact that I had to design and print out mounts for them uh, to actually hold like the retaining mounts on the bottom because the mounts are just, let's see if I can pull these out. Like the upper mount, these are like freaking solid blocks with of course the, the bearing pressed in. These things weigh a ton and these are the upper ones that are thinner. The lower ones are almost twice this weight, larger. Um, and the lower, the actual, the lower mounts have two bearings in them, as well as uh, an actual 
um, retaining mount on top of it. So it, it actually holds the bearings really well on the bottom mount. Um, they could hold a significant amount of weight. And then I've got a, I've got a couple of extra extrusions um, that I'm going to mount probably on the back of the printer, either on the back or somewhere near the bottom. I haven't fully decided yet. Um, that's going to hold the platform for the power supply and the control board. I don't know if I want it on the bottom or if I want it on the back yet. So yeah, there's that. Um, And these, uh, these Star Trek As Ascendancy game pieces, he's like, yeah, the guy who put it up on Thingiverse said that they are, they don't require any support. You just have to glue them together afterwards. So I started printing them out, and I got to the uh, Klingon base, and the Klingon base literally absolutely needs supports. It is ridiculous. It has round structures hanging off the side. It's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. No supports. Like, that'll print out. I've been looking for a good all-in-one design or good electronics box so I don't have to start from zero. Um, are you talking about just for, like, to actually hold the duet board? I, I do have one box that I, I like for the duet board. It actually has mounts that fit on 3030. Um, let's see if I can link that one here real quick. There's the uh, link in the comments in the, in the chat window there. Um, I took a look at that one and I started printing out. Let's see. I prefer doing them all in a single box when I can. This one actually, this holds the control board pretty nice. And it holds a cooling fan that actually directs air directly over the drivers. Um, I haven't printed out the top cover for it yet, but I did print out the arms and the front plate. The front plate gives you access to, you know, the USB port and the SD. There's a little hole if you want to hit the reset button. Um, it, it's actually pretty nice. So let's see. Um, let's get back to what I was doing. And it turns out that uh, these level shifters, these 5 to 3 volt level shifters that I bought to go into the, the floppy drive emulator boards, these are absolutely the wrong level shifters. They're completely, it's the wrong pinout, they're the wrong size. So I have to go back to eBay and order some more from China or AliExpress. Um, so yeah, there's those. Um, but I can get a lot of the rest of these done. Um, this is what you're going to use on your X5S. Oh, look at that. That's pretty nice looking. Oh, wow. Look at that monster, that thing is huge. Hey, Germanese, hi, welcome back. Doing a little bit of uh, 3D printing and, uh, and electronics projects tonight. Oh yeah, I just have this little, this little board holder. Um, I pulled it out because I'm actually soldering up some boards. They're, they are not audio plugs. They are six pinned in for serial cable for Commodore peripheral devices like uh, floppy drives and uh, printers. The board actually is a floppy drive emulator uh, daughter board that goes on top of a Raspberry Pi. And this is actually a nicer, like I had the boards made from a place in China called the PCB Way and uh, bought a bunch of components to solder on, and I started soldering them together tonight. And uh, also, it's just uh, 
talking with Eddie Mosier here about uh, the Hypercube Evo. He's got one going as well. Um, and we're building, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how long mine will take to finish, but uh, I definitely want to get it done sooner. You know, and his audio plugs for planar headphones. They use six pin DIN socket. These aren't like the, the nice key, uh, you know, like the mic, mic jacks. These are just like really basic, super generic. <laughs> that up to the camera. This camera I've got is kind of shitty. Um, I have seen other devices use these for a lot of different things and they're very similar to MIDI plugs. Oh, someone never had a 486. Oh my gosh. Dragging me back to the days of my 386 with a freaking barrel jack. I actually had, I had that barrel jack adapter that adapted down to a PS2 so I could actually use my PS2 keyboard. Yeah, um, the, yeah. Think these these only use six pins. Um, the video connector on the Commodore actually is an eight pin version of this, and uh, I think they make a nine and a ten pin version as well for uh, different applications. There was an older uh, an older keyboard port. It's like a is that the IBM XT AT ports. Eddie. Let's see. IBM XT keyboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the XT keyboard connectors were five pinned in. They're, the, the XT connectors were just like these, but they're five pin. Um, they didn't have the center pin and it was wrapped tighter around the bottom for all five pins, which is actually similar to the eight pin. Yeah, that XT, I, I had one of those for such a long time. <laughs> it's funny, my, my 386 tower case that I had actually survived with me all the way up until my K6 2450. <laughs> they broke all the time, yeah. Yeah, these these aren't the these aren't the most pretty connectors either. They're kind of flimsy. Um, but yeah, that that case. Funny thing, that three eighty six case I had had all the the holes for all the big XT connectors, um, and my K six two didn't actually have the XT connector. I had the smaller ones, and they were offset, <laughs> so they didn't quite fit in into the back of the case very well. That was before they actually had pop out, uh, pop out I/O plates, and uh, I was actually playing Diablo 2 right when the Diablo 2 beta came out, and I had dropped something off of my desk, and it hit the front of the 386 case right where the big fat rocker switch was on the 386, and uh, of course they they literally had on-off switches; they didn't have soft power switches. So when it hit that switch. My computer went, Poof! shit, and I lost a hard drive because of it. <laughs> Not making that mistake a second time. All right. Um, so yeah, before uh, before everybody else came in, stop by and say hi. I was realizing that I am running out of solder. In fact, I I have this little solder nub left. Um, so I need to. I actually need to run in the other room real quick. I will be right back and I will grab my other roll of solder. And I am back. 
Bluetooth USB headset where <laughs> not this thing for sure this thing is a uh, this thing is a super piece of shit creative microphone because my my lav mic my really nice lav mic stopped working I'm really pissed about that that was like one of the best mics I've ever had and it only lasted like it lasted less than a year I thought I was going crazy because I couldn't, couldn't get the microphone to work and I was like you know what let's just try another one so I went back and got my really cheap one that I've had forever and ever and oh that one just instantly works crap so yeah MG chemicals solder 6337 I'm using this mic um, that it's actually this is just a little no it, it is this mic believe me if it was the cam mic it would be a little bit lower now, the cam mic actually is kind of far it, it does have a nice mic on it but it's not that nice you can't hear the cloth noise actually because I have a I have a filter on um, actually I have a couple of filters on uh, in fact, if it was on the camera, you would actually hear fan noise because there's actually a fan over there, um, and that is not a quiet fan. All right, so who else is in chat? So we got Eddie, we got Germanese, Ossical. Say hi, Ossical, or say hi, whoever's in here. Um, so yeah, I got my other roll of solder. Actually, and I think about it, I should have grabbed a whole bunch more because I went through this first roll of solder in a heartbeat. It's a little company uh, up in Vancouver, up near Vancouver, Canada, uh, called MG Chemicals. They actually make a whole, well, they sell a whole lot of things. Um, I don't know how much of it they actually make. Um, they make the solder I have, they make the flux that I have, they made, um, they actually made 3D printer filament. My, I have a roll of wood fill from MG Chemicals that actually is a fantastic roll of filament. Uh, it does not clog very, very easily. Okay, Let's see if I can get some of these sockets. I see sockets mounted. Bend the pins just to hold the socket in there. Now I get it soldered up. So what projects you got going on, Germanys? Doing anything useful tonight? It's just a Monday. Computer builds. Oh, ah, what you building? You got a new machine up? Actually, the machine I'm streaming on right now is, is pretty new. Um, it's only using 6% CPU to do this stream, which is really nice. All right, so that's in place. And I have... I 
actually need? Where's my sockets? Yeah. <clears throat> Swapping parts out from rig to rig. Ah. Trying to build a better rig, or are you trying to get more than one rig going? Thing, just making one pretty and the other to be portable for land. Yeah, that's uh, that's always good. Um, actually, my streaming rig, the new one that I built, is portable enough for land, whereas my primary machine in my office is huge and weighs a ton, and I would not take it to a land <laughs> at all. I mean, it, it would definitely be a good gaming machine. I mean, it is a good gaming machine. It's my it's my 4K gaming monster, but I don't like moving it just because it weighs so much. All right, brown, black, red. Those 220s. Resistor. Brown, black, red. Those are 1K resistors. Yeah, everybody that's not impressed with an RTX is completely misunderstanding what it is. It is definitely a high powered, I mean, it, it's, it's faster board, but it's not like, it's not going to be an earth shattering evolution. It's, it's, it's got the ray train. It's got the tensors. It's, it's newer, different technology. It's not just the next fastest video card. And there's a lot of people that are dogging on it because it's not 10 times faster than the 1080. And it's like, really, come on, don't be stupid. some LEDs in here, there's a power LED and a, an activity LED. So it goes on on the work rig, just price wise not worth it. Honestly, the price is not a big deal. I bought my 1080 at the same damn price that the, the, the 2080s came out at. And it's not even a TI, it's an original 1080. 700 damn dollars. And honestly, I love my 1080. My 1080 is fantastic. Like I game in 4K on it and I don't have any issues at all. Got two 1080s, so <laughs> three if you count my wife's. Yeah, my wife's video card actually, I believe, is a. I want to say it's a 650. It was a low cost card that does game enough, but she doesn't do a whole lot of gaming. In fact, she hasn't done. Well, much gaming at all in quite a while. We used to play WoW together, but she's very busy these days. I just want to see if there's a lot of 
uh, uh, for me to buy it for my personal rig. Uh, that depends on what you want to do with it. It is still new tech. New tech always has that period right at the beginning where there are very few applications until everybody realizes what it can do. Work had it to play with. Hmm. My work actually just fired me. Actually, they my my uh, I work as a contract uh, managed services support for Microsoft, and Microsoft just canceled my company's support contract. So my entire team just got fired. So yay! Hey, look, I'm finding a new job, and I have more time to stream. Imagine that. We got two LEDs in there. There's a red activity LED and a green power LED that'll come on when the board's powered up. Yeah, me too, but you know, shit happens. I'll move on. My wife is still employed, so that's a good thing. I'm going to set this down for just a minute. I need to go grab some stuff. Yeah, lots of companies are looking at cutting people. They definitely want to uh, save money, which is funny because Microsoft just had like its best quarter ever. And which one is the plus? That one is the plus. And we'll bend these pins out just a little bit. Our marketing team is refusing to do work. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a marketing team, all right. No offense if you're in marketing specifically, but I fucking hate marketing teams. <laughs> I hate the word marketing. Yeah, I hear you. I completely understand that. And we got a little piezo buzzer mounted in there. A little piezo buzzer actually is uh
supposed to emulate the sound, the clicking sound that the hard drives make when they're they're changing sectors and and uh, various other tasks. There's a little jumper that goes in here that can actually enable or disable the little piezo buzzer in case you find it super effing annoying. But uh, I'm making I'm making these drives for friends, so I'm going to give them all the options if they want to actually enable the speaker or not. And turn off and on various things. even have little teeny tiny jumper pins. This is actually the interface for a Commodore 64 to, to emulate a floppy drive. So you don't actually have to use a real floppy drive. Here's a, this is actually a hand-built uh, kind of prototype version um, sitting on top of a Raspberry Pi 3. The Raspberry Pi has a program on the SD card that when you boot it up, it runs this emulation program that emulates the CPU, the RAM, and all of the other characteristics like full-on uh, cycle accurate emulation of a floppy drive because the floppy drives in Commodores were actually complete separate computers that just communicated to the Commodore via serial connection. And uh, there are cheap ways to hook up like an SD card into the serial port of a Commodore. And for the most part, they work for most things, but they're not, they're not real. They, they don't actually emulate every type of communication that the, the hard drive can do. Um, so some things just don't flat out work because they rely on the disk drive functioning like a disk drive. Um, and this thing, I've, I've actually, the prototype, I've played with it quite a bit on my, my Commodore Portable. And that thing, freaking, it works awesome. It, it is really cool. Um, but I wanted to actually put together some some nice boards and give them to a few people I know that still use Commodores, or still have them at least, so they can actually pull them out of storage and, you know, at least get some, uh, get some real hardware going again. And these boards are actually, this is a really nice design. And let's see, what else do I need? I need, so unfortunately the level shifters I got are the wrong type of level shifter. They're wider and the pinout is a little bit different. Um, so I need to order some more of those, and I've got a couple of adapt, uh, a couple of extra little components to plug in, and there's also a small OLED screen that goes in. Um, I'm actually going to solder a little connector socket on the board, um, so I can actually run it out. I can run the cable out with the uh, the OLED screen to like the front of the the 3D printed case, so you can actually see it, and it looks nice. Well, you know what the general partners called marketing? Special snowflakes. <laughs> we just bought three of those OLED. Yeah, these are the just the generic. I think this one's a blue one. Um, I've got tons of them flying around. Just the little 12864 blue. Um, the one I have on my prototype board, actually, this is one of the super cheap ones that are blue on like the bottom two thirds and yellow on the top third. 
Um, they still have the same resolution and they still work okay, but like they were intended for like a media player or some application where there was status on the top and all the details were at the bottom. Um, so when this one boots up, it's actually yellow and blue. It's kind of funny. Yeah, we use it, using it to display GSM signal and phone number input. Yeah, that's the, those, these little things are used in a whole bunch of things. Um, I actually had a little teeny tiny cube MP3 player that had one of those screens in it. It was kind of neat. Pulled it right out. It was it was exactly the same screen. So let's see. Well, shit. I can solder in switches and connectors on the rest of the boards. Start getting those in. Unfortunately, having to actually uh, order some some more parts, order the the correct local shifter, see if I can find the exact same ones. Um, will take a little while. Yes, MP3. You remember those? Back when MP3 players had like two gigs of storage space on them. You actually had to select which songs you wanted to take with you ahead of time. <laughs> I'm sure Eddie remembers those days. You should pimp out your profile here on Twitch. Yeah, I, I really need to figure that out and learn what I need to do. Do you actually have any suggestions on that? The things you might have seen, um, other profile stuff that uh, I should add? Still working on getting uh, 50 followers up. I think I've only got like 18 or 19. I just got like the streaming rig all set up. Oh, schedule. Yeah, schedule. Eh, I don't have one of those. Uh, I actually, I, honestly, I, I should make a schedule. That definitely helps. People like a schedule. Hey, look, Randy streaming on, uh, on Tuesday nights. Except for every other Tuesday. All right, let's see if I can get these connectors mounted in there and soldered down. It's a lay. Hey, welcome, it's a lay. Say hi. Uh, my name is Duo. I do 3D printing and electronics projects. I'm currently building some uh, Raspberry Pi hats that emulate a floppy drive for an old 8 bit computer. Introduce yourself, it's a lay. What do you do? What do you work on? What do you like? And donations and P.O. Box donations. Yeah, actually, I, I did think about getting a P.O. Box, and I looked into that the other day. Hey, you'll leave a follow for me? Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. I am trying to build followers. And I did look into a P.O. box for donations, like physical donations. And uh, gosh, some of those P.O. boxes are really expensive. And of course, now that I have to find another place of employment, I'm really saving my money. I definitely need to get some kind of like a PayPal donation going or something similar to that. Do I have Twitter? Yes, I do have Twitter. I am on Twitter. I am on YouTube. That's my Twitter handle, at Randy Mongeneau. Ossicle is now following. Awesome. Thanks, Ossicle. And YouTube.com. I've been uploading my streams over to uh, up, over to YouTube after I get the streams done uh, and working on uh, making that a better habit. But uh, I've been sharing my 3D printing, my electronics projects. 
little things I've been working on here and there. And uh, hopefully some people find that stuff interesting. I actually talked with a guy the other night for a couple of hours about 3D printing because he wanted to learn more about it. And uh, 3D printing is awesome. Um, I got a Mendel Max 3 3D printer back here. It's going to be printing out some game board game pieces for me. And I've got the Hypercube Evo tall version um, in progress. It's being built. Um, it's actually mostly done. Um, I have all the parts for it. I need to get everything finished wiring up. It's actually a really cool printer design. Very rigid, very sturdy. My PO box is 79 for a year USPS. Yep, that's the basic one. That's the small PO box too. Um, the the larger boxes are, I think, uh, when I looked at them at the, the post office here, they were upwards of $150 and there was a one year waiting list. They only had like, so they had some smalls and they had a couple of mediums. Left a follow on Twitter. Thanks, it's a lay. Appreciate it. I'll definitely check that out. So let me get my phone out here because that's the easiest way to get me on Twitter. Hey, LA, followed you. Awesome. Lead designer at this is Kersey. <laughs> cool. I will definitely check out your Twitter feed. Awesome. Are they going to give you a key to pick up larger packages anyways? Yeah. Yeah, they will. Um, but you know, then again, still, I really need to save, save up some money, at least until I figure out what I'm going to do about, uh, about work coming up. Um, and I, I'll definitely get like the, uh, some kind of actual donation link if people, um, what are the, like the buy me a coffee, uh, type donation sites or, you know, I, I definitely do have PayPal. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely get that going in the future. Um, and also for Ossicle and it's a lay, uh, I do actually these projects up here, the LEDs up in the corner. Um, these are actual PDP. This is a PDP eight and this is a PDP 11 old mainframe front panel. Um, they are running the old mainframe operating systems. The one on the left with the red LEDs is running um, RSX 11 M, which is an old 16 bit uh, 1970s operating system. Um, and it is actually running um, the full on front panel display you can control it, um, and that was a three. Uh, that was a project that uh, an electronics project that I put together on stream um, a couple of months ago. And unfortunately, I lost that Twitch stream on the history. Um, although I mean, it's a cool build. It's it's up there. It's running. And actually, there's a Raspberry Pi in it that's doing the emulation for the PDP-11, and uh, it's on a Wi-Fi connection. I can actually log into it on a serial terminal and and completely. Um, interact with it as an original multi-user system back in the 70s. It's also nice just to have it up on the shelf blinking LEDs. <laughs> I am all about them LEDs. I mean, who isn't, right? I actually have a box of LEDs down in the corner just for projects. Oh look, this thing needs an LED. Throw an LED in there. This thing doesn't need an LED. Throw an LED on there anyways. <laughs> These boards have two LEDs on them. And these boards that I'm building here are actually uh, Commodore 64 floppy drive emulator boards. Uh, these connect to a Raspberry Pi and uh, the Raspberry Pi fully emulates a uh, Commodore 64 1541 floppy drive and all the hardware that's in it and uses this board to connect. So you can actually have nice disk images um, just throw them on an SD card, pop it in here. You can actually boot up an original Commodore 64 with any, any disk images you want. And they run fast. Actually, it runs really nice. And I've got a few of the boards that I'm building here. I'm going to give away some to friends that actually have Commodores um, once I get all the pieces in. This one's close to functional. They have a little OLED screen that goes right on top that you can actually see which uh, disk image you have selected and little buttons on the front here to actually control which disk image is loaded up. You can actually load up a whole lot of disk images at once because the Pi has, you know, a gigabyte of RAM. Pretty neat. So yeah, I'm, let's see, did I get all those soldered down? Yep, I got those soldered down. 
Actually, I'm going to pop this one out and we'll get the header connector soldered in on the rest of them. pins on these dang connectors are bent because this these came in a bag they actually came in a bag from China I'm surprised they actually arrived in one piece <laughs> of course the pins are all bent down And, all right, that looks good. Get those popped in, and we'll get these suckers soldered down. And there's a kitty cat at my feet begging for attention. Hey, cat, what are you doing? Come here. Hi. You doing good? I can't have you up on my lap right now. Too much static. Alright. Get in your home. There you go. Awesome. We'll definitely get these connectors soldered down, and that's a good start. There's a couple of ways to build these boards, too. Um, there's a simple way to build an interface board, which requires very little other than just a level shifter attached to a Raspberry Pi, and that's kind of neat. Um, the downside is there is a limit on the amount of current that setup can handle, and uh, if you connect more than, I think, it's two or three devices to the serial bus, you can actually burn out your Pi. Um, so the better version of the build is actually this version, and there's a driver chip that actually gets mounted on the board um, it's the exact same driver chip that the Commodore uses. It's a 7.4. It's a, uh, a, a TTL chip, a 7.4.06. And the Commodores use that exact same chip to do their bus driving as well. Their bus driving, driving the bus. More power, yeah, absolutely. More power, and, and it also it takes the load away from the Raspberry Pi and puts it on a chip that's in a socket that's really easy to replace. In fact, the 7406s on the Commodore floppy drives um, tended to be parts that failed just because they were being so abused. Uh, thankfully, though, the newer 7406 chips are much more robust. Um, you can put a whole lot of current through them, a whole lot of voltage through them, and they just keep running. So yeah, awesome. Got the connectors on that one done. And that one's got a little dust on it. Like the American TV show Power Tool. Home, yeah, Home Improvement. Rah, 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 rah. Tim the Toolman Taylor, more power. Rah. Yeah, that TV show was pretty funny. The actor himself, though, is he's a bit of an asshole. <laughs> um, but that actor, uh, the actor is uh, crap. What's his name? Um. I forget what the actor's name is, but he also does the voice for Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story movies. 
Tim Allen. His name is Tim Allen. Yeah. So uh, Tim Allen is the uh, the voice of Buzz Lightyear, and um, Tom Hanks is Woody, I believe. <laughs> well, he was kind of a butthole also on the TV show. Yep. Um, and he also recently had another TV show where he was also a butthole. Um, I forget what the name of the show was because I didn't really care for it. He, he's been trying to survive in the sitcom world, although I don't know why. He's, he made a whole lot of money with the Toy Story voice franchise. I mean, he is Buzz Lightyear. Greed lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, funny thing about money, it's never enough. Both in the literal and ironic form. Like this job that I had and was just released from, um, I made pretty good money actually. And uh, I definitely made more money than some of my previous jobs. And uh, unfortunately, like, it always seemed like it was never enough. <laughs> There's always more I want to do. But then I have really expensive hobbies, too. 3D printing can be very expensive. Electronics can be very expensive. Uh, vintage computers, it gets really expensive, especially nowadays. There's so much of those devices just cost so much. Um, and my other hobby is flying. I actually, I have my pilot's license and I fly from time to time. I don't own a plane because I literally cannot afford one. Um, I stopped buying $50 bearings. Dude, that, that, that ball screw is awesome. $50 ball screw is totally worth the resolution and the, and, the, uh, and the lack of slop. And no, I'm definitely not buying any iPhone. Screw Apple. The fact that Apple named their newest iPhone, the iPhone XS, like, and, and people are just eating it up. Like, it's the coolest thing ever. And it's literally, you have three, you have three iPhones, Eddie? I hope you don't have three iPhones. Or at least I hope you're not the one paying for them. Gosh, you are paying for them. Ah, I can't stand iPhones. Okay, let me let me let me clarify that. Um, I can't stand Steve Jobs. I think Steve Jobs was an asshole who abused people and definitely spent his whole life profiting over that kind of that kind of unethical treatment. Yes, but he's dead. Yeah, but you know what? I hate forever. Apple's the company he built on the back of slaves. That's one reason I'm really starting to dislike Amazon as well. Eddie. They stopped innovating three years after he died. They stopped innovating way before he died. They didn't innovate shit. Oh no, what you make is not slave money, but you know, I, I, I do have other relatives that work for Amazon and they work in the actual slave factory. One of them builds the slave factories. He's built quite a few uh, Amazon facilities around the country and the other one actually works in the slave factory picking parts that's okay for him he's he's young <laughs> the 
factory you had to go to was a much nicer version, or was much much nicer than the WM version. Not sure the pay range. <laughs> we make random stuff that goes underneath their facility. You make random stuff, Germanese? Oh, Walmart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Walmart. I did actually work for Walmart at one point. That was like one of the worst effing jobs ever. Obviously, all words are my opinion and do not represent the view of the company I work for. Yep. I completely understand where you're coming from on that, Eddie. I've actually had to say that for this job that I have now, too. <laughs> I think Duo likes Polymaker. He has a couple of stairs. Hey, hey, Jatman, Dustin, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, I'd like, I got, uh, there was a filament one, Polyalchemy, like literally, all these polyalchemy stickers came in like one box. Like, I, uh, one box, yeah. No, maybe it was two boxes. But like literally, they just loaded up the box with stickers. And of course, protopasta, I've got all the Capricorn stuff. And of course, I've got freaking awesome Jackman on there. On there as well. Practical printing matter hackers. I've got some stickers. I actually have a bunch of other stickers I need to dig out and uh, stick up everywhere. And he's got to be very careful due to his role. Yep, I, I get you. I understand. Germanese, so you stuck them all on there all at once. Actually, no, it took, um, well, I stuck all of these up here, and I had a couple other a couple other stickers up. And uh, as time went on, I, I ordered more filament. I started adding other things. And um, actually, a lot of the filament that I have purchased in the last year hasn't really come with stickers. So how's it going, Dustin? I am working on building, excuse me, working on building a couple of things. Well, first and foremost, I've got my Mendel Max 3 printing some game pieces, um, board game pieces for a friend. And my Hypercube Evo is being built. I've actually got the Duet uh, the Duet 2 Wi-Fi here set up and a lot of the, the motors are wired up and ready to go. Um, I just need to actually finish assembly and get the end stops configured correctly, get the end stops mounted correctly. It's going, just got home like an hour ago. Oh my gosh, really? Was like, were you at work that late or were you dealing with personal stuff that late? Also, I saw you had ramen the other day on Twitter and gosh, that ramen looked really good. <laughs> I need to get some ramen. Um, and the electronics project I'm working on, I'm actually building these uh, Raspberry Pi hats that are um, floppy drive emulators for Commodore 64. I, I bought boards and pieces for quite a few of them. I'm gonna give them away to some friends uh, that I know that have Commodores, um, just so they can actually not have to need a floppy disk. So I'm getting all those soldered in. Looks like, uh, yeah, that one's all soldered in. Is that work that late? But I also went in, oh, you went in at like 11. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah, um, well, that's that's the thing. Actually, I, I ordered these boards from PCB Way, which is a, a Chinese PCB fab, and their minimum order is five boards. So I was like, you know what? I can totally build five of these things and give them to friends. I know I, I know people that have Commodores that actually use them every every now and then. Um, and the rest of the pieces were like dirt cheap. The the DIN connectors on here, I think, um, ten bucks. Uh, no, it wasn't even ten bucks. It was six bucks to get all ten of them shipped, and buttons and all the little crap. It's it's just little parts from eBay, uh, eBay eBay out of China. Um, and I'm just getting them all soldered up. And I realized that too, like uh, the level shifter between the Raspberry Pi and the, the Commodore, um, the level shifters I bought were the wrong type. Um, they're bigger and the pinout is wrong, so I gotta get some more of those. Um, they also have OLED screens on them, so you can actually see 
Um, you can use the buttons that are on the side of it in con conjunction with the OLED screen to load different disk images. <laughs> so Dustin, have you actually seen my, my streaming area now? I, this is the new streaming area I got set up. I got uh, a new streaming PC built sitting under the desk. Um, actually got space for all my 3D printing stuff in the rack and shelf under here. The actual workspace on the back with uh, shelving for more stuff. Um, of course, the nice shelf up top that's got some of my Raspberry Pi um, emulation projects, LEDs up there, kind of looks neat. Uh, it is definitely much more organized. Um, and I've got other lights around too, um, although I don't have all the lights set up right now. The fire starter behind me. Which fire starter? Oh, this shit. Or are you talking about this 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 damn thing? This X8. Yeah. Um, this thing actually doesn't. This thing uh, it technically can print. It does print, but I don't use it for printing. It's actually got, it's my test bed for testing out um, control boards. Uh, currently, there is a Gen L on there with the 2130, TMC 2130 drivers on it, and it's just mounted there temporarily so I can actually test out motion and, and configs on there. Um, that board actually is eventually going to make it into this machine here, um, the Mental Max 3, because the Mental Max 3 that I have in here has currently got a smoothie knockoff. And it's got soldered on 8825 drivers that I absolutely despise now. Um, and since this is just a standard Cartesian printer, I can absolutely run it with the Gen L with those 2130 drivers. And it'll actually run a little quieter, a little nicer. I mean, the printer itself, like the mechanics on it are, are rock solid. It's, it's one of the, the coolest, like everything on it is, is literally solid. Uh, I got my MKS S base sitting aside. Yep, that's that's what's in there. It's it's the S base. That smoothie clone. If I had another, if I had another camera on here, I'd show you. It's the S base version 1.3 buried in there. It's uh, I mean. Honestly, the board itself is not that bad, other than the fact that the 8825 drivers are soldered on. So there are headers for stepper control if you want to use external steppers, but there's no, I would have to hack in an interface for the current control module. And that seems like an awful lot of work for something I can just replace with, you know, the the Gen L board. I can use the Gen L board without making a huge mess. Um, and yeah, I can run Marlin 2 on it. Um, it is, it's functional, if a little iffy, um, but that's getting better. And uh, I've been hearing too that uh, there's, there's quite a few people that are actually investigating Marlin 2 and all the little things that need to be done to get it running up on the, the Duet 2. Um, technically, you can put Marlin 2 on a Duet 2 right now. It's just once you get it there, a lot of stuff doesn't work. Um, a lot of little things on the board just need to have uh, uh, just need to have updated libraries, updated drivers, stuff to, to communicate with the rest of the hardware on the board. Uh, I mean, other than that, it's it's just a standard Atmel SAM 32-bit processor, which I mean, other boards have it. it all of the uh, all the Arduino stuff supports the the SAM targets. I mean, it's it's rep rep firmware. I mean, it's it's built the same damn way as, as Marlin. Until they get a web interface that's close, I would never consider putting Marlin on it. The cool thing about that is you can run the entire web interface from the ESP module that's in there. Like. Everything that the ESP module needs to run a web interface can literally be loaded on the ESP itself. Of course, they the Duet keeps has a lot of that stuff on the SD card, but you can actually 
I would like to see somebody create a nice generic web interface just for the ESPs so that the onboard firmware can be completely separated from that. Yeah, you got to convert command. You got it. There, there is work to do on that, but honestly, I, I really think that the ESPs for as a serial interface is fantastic. And you know, even even if you dumb it down and literally just make the ESP a Wi-Fi serial port um, instead of the USB cable, it it still functions. It, it it'll still function that way just fine. Yeah, the interface is open source. So that, that, I've gone through all the sources for that and taken a look, and uh, there's a whole lot in there to go through. Um, honestly, it's a project I don't really want to pick through at the moment because uh, I just have the one board, and I'm really focusing on staying current with the Marlin 2 stuff. Um, Marlin 2 runs on that board just fine. Um, can run on this one, but uh, it's still kind of experimental, and at least the smoothie firmware is, is stable. Um, and supposedly the smoothie guys are coming out with their their smoothie board too. They've been talking and they've been sampling out new uh, new prototype hardware. I guess we'll see what happens on that. Okay, so I've got all the the serial DIN port connectors in. I need to actually I'm gonna start soldering up the IC sockets. Put Marlin 2 on the Gen L for the X5S. Yeah, like that, that's totally fine. Um, the Gen L, even though it's not, I mean, it's not the fastest board, but obviously it's a really versatile board. And especially when you got the 2130s on it, they'll run smoothly even if you're not going to be running high speed because of the, the processor on it. Smoothie needs to make some big advances and change their outlook on things because they are just their own worst enemy. Yes, they are. Um, they are very much their own worst enemy. Uh, watching the forums, I, I still do watch the forums because the my Mendel Max uses the uh, uses the smoothie uh, clone, um, so I pay attention. And it's they are they they need a lot of help they need a lot of work they need a better attitude <laughs> um, honestly though there are a lot of features in smoothie that are pretty nice um, unfortunately development on it is really slow so things like marlin and the rep rep firmware are all just blowing by it with adding new features and, and supporting new boards um, smoothie is very much a a single target firmware, whereas you know Marlin and Marlin's more of an ecosystem now. It supports so many things. I have Marlin 2 on my Gen L running 2.85 millimeter direct drive Ender 2 mod. Ah, that's the one that you were playing with recently where you threw in yeah, you, you threw in that full on direct drive on that Ender 2 and it's uh gosh the thing goes massive on that on that arm, on that cantilevered arm. But hey, it prints, right? And it prints with three millimeter filament. You probably like crank out some, some pretty large, uh, well, large within the 200 by 200 bit on the on that Ender. Does that uh, does that Ender two mod have like, a, is that like a volcano or a, is that just a regular, is that just a regular uh, E3D V6 with a fat nozzle? Yeah, Eddie, you actually, Eddie, you got me to, to bite on that Gen L board. Um, and actually, that's that's one of the Gen L boards there. I had the other one uh, stuck in storage. Actually, it's over here. Stuck in a box because uh, I don't have another printer for that one right now. Although I do actually. I do have the set of, this is actually two complete sets of extrusion for the Railcore 2. 
So I've actually got the extrusions and some of the hardware for that, and I definitely want to set up a real core too um, soon uh, after I get this monster built, after I get that Hevo done. Uh, Joe ordered three with 2130s after I showed him what I was doing. Good. Actually, I'd like to see what Joe does with those. Got my Gen L from the POS Flying Bear. I had to review, stripped it down, and reused it here. Yeah, that flying, that flying bear. <laughs> that is something. I'm going to get these sockets thrown on here real quick. Still got my soldering iron on. And this will just essentially be throwing throwing some extra solder around. One of the other things I've been doing lately is uh, I've actually been playing Switch, which is nice because my wife got that for me for my birthday a couple months ago. And uh, some of those Switch games are really damn fun. Uh, the Zelda game Breath of the Wild has been absolutely fantastic. It's, it's one of the best Zelda games ever. Um, there's so many neat things in it. And, I actually haven't beaten it yet because I keep finding myself wanting to go back and actually complete all the side quests and explore all the little areas that I actually hadn't wandered through at one point. Lots of lots of cool little things. Nice, either Railcore or the E3D would be next, depending on if E3D releases this year. Cool, uh, cool thing, um, the Railcore guys just announced too that. Um, one of the companies, I forget which company it was, um, if somebody remembers it, go ahead and drop a link in chat. Um, one of the companies that supplies 3D printer parts is actually going to make kits for the real core too. They're actually going to be the 300 ZL with the triple axis uh, Z bed leveling. Um, and they're selling them as a kit. And I think they were thinking that the price could be somewhere R3D from Murph. Yes, R3D. Thank you. Um, I think it was going to be somewhere between like twelve and seventeen hundred dollars, depending. Um, and the the extrusions, I mean, just the extrusions to build the frames are pretty damn, pretty damn cheap, uh, which is why I bought two sets. And I, I really, really liked Tony's build. Um, that was one of the more impressive machines at Murph. It, honestly. There was so much impressive stuff going on at Murph. It was like, it was insane. Um, Walter from Country 3D was at Murph and he brought his 3D printed i3 uh, clone, um, which I walked by it and saw it and I, I totally didn't, uh, I didn't connect it with Walter at the time. Um, of course, now I'm following Walter. He's pretty damn cool. Um, I definitely want to go to Murph again next year. That that trip was just really, it, it was a whole lot of fun. Um, even if it was overwhelming, just so much stuff in such a small place. Um, and sitting there and actually talking to Tony for like an hour um, while his printer was, while the Railcore 2 was just printing away, just blowing everything away. Oh, you'll be there next year? Cool, Javin. Good to see you. That'll be awesome. I'll be back next year, but not sure I'll bring Bella. Well, I don't know if she had a whole lot of fun. Maybe it was too much for her, or just maybe she's not interested anymore. You know how kids are. Oh, she does want to go again. We'll see how that changes uh, over the course of the next six months.
make sure I get these sockets in correctly. I'll get these sockets nailed down. Oh, well, what adult stuff was there? You say you missed all the adult stuff, but I'm sitting here thinking there was adult stuff? Did I miss out? Party at the hotel the first night. I totally did not get to go to the party because I got there like the morning after. Did I get there? I got there. I think I got there like at 11 o'clock on Saturday. So if they had a party on Saturday, I totally missed that one. I feel dumb on that one. <laughs> And of course, the Matter Hackers people were great. Romero was just fantastic to hang out with and chat with. Definitely sad that I didn't get to, get to go to a New York Maker Fair, but uh, that was just a. I've had so many trips this year; it's been difficult to to find another to go on more. Uh, really cool seeing all the pictures from New York Maker Fair, seeing. Uh, Prusa and the new SL1 and the Prusa filament. I hope they do more than just PLA filament though. Everyone was pretty awesome, except I couldn't get Jetman to speak. <laughs> what happened there? Did I miss something? I talked so much at Murph that like I at the end of the night when I went home or when I went back to the hotel it was just like I don't want to talk uh, just don't like my throat was so bad and just so worn out and that's good that that means that you know there was a lot of people to talk with a lot of people to see I had a really good time You know, actually, now that you mentioned that, Eddie, there were there were a few moments when when I definitely saw <laughs> saw Dustin distracted, um, but at the same time, he was there at you know working too, I, I believe. just one of those things those shows tend to uh, overwhelm it's like my days back when I was doing more games programming and uh, I used to go to e3 e3 is such a blast but it's so much work it is draining Especially when you go behind closed doors and everybody wants to show you their prototype this, prototype that. Chasing down Miyamoto one year to get his autograph was, was time consuming. Good night. And I'm definitely running, running low on time here. So I'll get this last socket mounted. I will definitely pack it up for the night. Yeah, he had his manager with him. Yeah, that was your manager. I remember seeing that. 
a different manager wants to go next year, but that one's more interested in everything than the other. <laughs> That's well, more interested is good. You know, maybe you can just let that manager go and do his thing. Well, you go and enjoy the stuff you want to go do. So yeah, Dustin, you've been at you've been at that company now for quite a while. That's that's actually kind of neat. Didn't realize, you know how long it's been it's actually i mean murph was like six months ago easily and you've been been with that company for quite a while that's pretty darn cool just over nine months all right well i've got I've got quite a few components mounted on these boards now. Um, I'll definitely, uh, I've got tons of switches that I need to mount on each, on each one of these little push button switches. Um, and more stuff to 3D print. And I don't think I will be available tomorrow night. Can I hit the hay meeting tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I've got, a, I've got plenty of work to finish up tomorrow closing stuff out, tickets out too, so I'm headed out here in just a sec. Uh, and my wife just went to bed, so uh, I'm going to follow her. And, uh, definitely stop making noise, because the bedroom's on the other side of the wall. And I am not that quiet. <sighs> well, gentlemen, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for hanging out and chatting with me. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for showing some interest and uh, laughing at some of the stuff I've still got hanging around here. Um, I will definitely catch you on another stream another night. Good night.